I saw a video uh, showing this particular math problem and I was a bit confused by it at first. Um, and it was actually quite interesting. So um, you have x plus xy plus y is equal 32 and you need to solve it for x and y. And you go immediately, hang on, uh, you've only got one equation and two unknowns. There's an infinite number of solutions. The bit that wasn't clear is that x and y need to be integers. So when looking at that, if you try to solve it with, um, you know, by moving the terms around to divide by x or y, you get in a bit of a tangle. There is an insight which um, you can see if, if you look at this, the idea of x and then the product of x and y and then y, it's kind of might remind you of a plus b multiplied by b plus a perhaps where one of these is a 1. In other words, x plus 1 multiplied by y plus 1 almost gives us this. It's like you do x times 1 gives you the x, x and y gives you the xy, and y times 1 gives you the y, but there would also be plus 1. So if you want to keep this the same, then you have to subtract one. And the, these, I mean, how you get that insight to go to this is the interesting part. But once you've got there, you can see how these are equivalent. So then the next step um, is uh, we can move that minus one over here. So we can say x plus one, y plus one is equal 32. Um, and now we have the product of two values that equals 32 and we know we need integers so uh, sorry 33 I beg your pardon because <laughs> I had to move that over equal 33 so um, if these are going to be integers then what we're interested in are the factors of 33 so we can look at that factors of 33 are well 33 and then you have to go all the way down to 11 uh, and then you have 3, and then you have 1, and those are all the factors of 33. If you're working upwards, you start from 1, that's obvious, and then 3 because 33, yeah, you, you know that 33 is divided, divisible by 3. There's a trick if you add together the digits, and the digits all added together, and continue doing that till you get a single number. If that number is divisible by 3, then the number you started with was divisible by 3. But anyway, the point is that's 3. And then if 4, to get that 3, you need to multiply by 11. And 11 is a prime number. So you, you know you're never going to get any, any further than that. So this means that the only way that you can get 33 is by multiplying these together. You have to remember that there's also, you know, the negative side of this. So what we're looking for are numbers that we can multiply together so that we get 33. And I'm going to look at x plus 1 and y plus 1. And they've got to be some kind of combination of these values. So we have like 33 is equal. It's got to be 33 or 11 or, one, or 3 or 1 or minus 33. Or minus 11 or minus 3 or minus 1 and well it's the same thing for the other one isn't it also 33 11 3 1 minus 33 minus 11 minus 3 and minus 1 so if x plus 1 is equal 33 then it must mean that y is equal 1. If x plus 1 is 11, then y must equal 3, because they multiply together, we have to get 33. If x plus 1 is 3, then y plus 1 must be 11, and if x plus 1 is 1, then 
y plus 1 has to be 33. If x plus 1 is minus 33, then y plus 1 must equal, well, minus 1, and minus 1 times minus 33, and we end up with our value 33 again. So this one comes to there, and we've got this pattern just basically repeats itself. Now, to get x and y, we just have to subtract 1 away from this table because uh, x plus 1 is equal to this, so therefore x is equal to any number here plus 1. And when we do that, the possible values, there are 8, as I'm sure you can see, there are 8, and uh, you can just write them out. We'll just start from here. This is uh, 0, and um, 33 is uh, plus, minus 1 is 32. You can check here, you can see from the original thing, if x is 0, then this is 0, this is 0, and y equals 32, so that's looking good. Um, we can then continue with the next one, so 3, so if x plus 1 equals 3, then if x needs to be 3 minus 1, which is 2, and that is 11 minus 1, which is 10. Um, and uh, we, can, we carry on like that. So the next one is, uh, well, 11. And uh, that, well, not 11, 10, sorry. I have to subtract one. 10, 2, oh, it's the same. They're flipping around because, of course, it's symmetrical. So if you've got 0, 32, you'll also have 32, 0. So, but um, we need to do the minus ones, which I'll just write down uh, in between here. So. You know, um, a minus, if this is minus 33, if x plus 1 equals minus 33, then x is equal minus 33 uh, minus 1, which is minus 34. Well, that's interesting. And this thing appeared in my feed, and you might notice there's a connection with the normalized tunable sigmoid function here. Um, <laughs> so it's actually a hyperbolic, I think it's a hyperbolic function. Wasn't it? Anyway, um, never mind. So uh, this becomes uh, minus 34. Um, so, you know, if x is 30 minus 34, then y is minus 1, minus, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2. If x is, uh, well, we had uh, the next one which was um, here. So we say if we had x of minus uh, 11 becomes minus 12. And when that's minus 12, then this becomes uh, minus 4. Just subtracting one from each of these values. When uh, x is, oh look, and it repeats itself as well. And x is minus 4, then uh, minus 12. And um, when um, x is uh, the last one on here, when x is minus 2, uh, uh, here, sorry, yes, uh, that one, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, and uh, when it's minus 2, uh, we have uh, the same thing that we had over here, so that's minus, minus 34. And you can see how this works. So basically, there are eight answers um, that solve the equation and uh, it's only possible though to get some kind of answer from that because you have the restriction that you're looking for integer solutions. Um, I thought that was quite interesting. The point about the normalized tunable sigmoid function bit that, that I saw interesting here is that if we take the thing of the form x plus 1 y plus 1 equal 33 and we solve that we actually end up with something that looks like the normalized tunable sigmoid function um, you try it and you you'll you'll see what i mean anyway i thought that would be interesting